Welcome to the Bio Balance HealthCast, episode number 385. Painful sex is often the first sign of a serious condition for women, but most doctors dismiss it. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. As a male, growing up, getting married, being married, living most of my adult life, I never knew anything about painful sex for women. I, to the best I know, I didn't ever encounter that situation. You may not have known. I may not have known. <laughs> but as a counselor, counseling families, counseling women, mm-hmm. one of the complaints that often would present themselves is that sex was painful and the woman didn't want to have sex because it was painful. Right. And my education and training was like, well, go to a doctor. <laughs> we'll find and, out, make sure it's not something yeah. physical. And so some of these women would come back and say, I went to the doctor and the doctor said, there's nothing wrong with you. It's all in your head. It's probably anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's probably uh, guilt. Or you're shame, mad at your husband. Uh, yeah. Relational issue. You know, go talk to your counselor. And I'm like, go talk to your doctor. It's not supposed to hurt. <laughs> if it hurts, there's something wrong. And well, they're like, Go talk to your therapist. No, no offense, but that's the the male mentality of medical training. Yeah. Medical training, they said to me on the first day of gynecology, dyspareunia means painful sex. So dyspareunia is better than no perunia at all. (laughs) That was their their mantra. So if somebody said I have painful intercourse. Of course, you're the only woman in the class. I mean, I'm the only woman. You're not standing up and going. Well, I'm, there's 14, 14 yeah. of us out of 115, Yeah. and I'm not even in the same group with any women. So right. I'm like, Wait, whoa, whoa, Wait, what did you say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I in and those days. smile in that masculine way of theirs. In those days, yeah. I would just. Little lady. Smile and mm-hmm. talk to patients differently and go, well, that could be, so-. I knew that means something. If you have painful intercourse, that's not normal. Right. Now there's several different kinds of painful intercourse from the women's woman's side. And one is painful intercourse from dryness. It feels like you're having sex with sandpaper. That is a hormonal problem. You don't have enough estrogen or you're on a low dose birth control pill. It is something that in general can be fixed, but it is a severe problem. It'll keep people, especially young people, from having sex at all with their spouse. Yeah. And then that's, that well, is now a template for the rest of their marriage, that sex is going to hurt. Like when I first got married, I was on a low-dose pill, and I had that problem. And then that just sets, sets you up. I can tell you as a male, I don't want to have sex with her if it's painful for her. Right, right. But I want to have sex. Right. And so we need to solve this problem. And if the doctors are sending her back saying, it's all in your head, or that's it's truly unfair. in your relationship. That's truly unfair. That's that's the the wastebasket term that that yeah. physicians and and medical people give to women when they don't want to think about something or they're just too lazy to give them a medication. I mean, it's easy. You change the birth control pill. You you look at the at the patient's bottom to make sure there's no infection. There's there's no growth. There's no yeah. anything else. And and. You then treat them for the dry vagina. So that is easily treated, easily fixed, no risk, no problem. Patient just has to, if they're menopausal, they have to use an estrogen cream if they don't want to take estrogen itself. In my world, everybody takes estrogen who can in the pellet in the pellet world, and they don't have this problem. This is not a problem I have in my yeah. office. Painful sex. Right. This is not a problem that people come in for. So that's one of the things. Yeah. You asked me earlier about endometriosis. Right. Endometriosis is um, small growths of tissue that looks just like the lining of your uterus, but it's not inside your uterus. It's outside your pelvis. And so it's in your abdomen. Every month, 
after ovulation, these little implants start getting thicker and thicker and bloodier. They, they ooze blood, which then in your belly makes you have pelvic pain and belly pain. But when you have intercourse, you are bumping against this air, this inflamed area right. that is usually stuck to the uterus. So you're moving the bowel and it feels like somebody's pulling your bowel out. I had endometriosis. I know what this feels like too. Right. And it's, it is miserable and this is worse. This is more extreme pain than the dry vagina pain. This is deep at deep thrust when you hit the cervix. It, it's like you know you just, you have to go stop. I can't do this. This is this is really awful, and that should be evaluated and fixed. Yes, and there is uh, there's a condition which causes it that is knowable and treatable, and mm-hmm. doctors now know. But we for many years, I was even trained knowing this. But most people don't want to talk about sex. Most doctors don't want to talk about sex, and this is related to sex. So, mm, or they need to do a surgery. Right. So for a family doctor, they'd have to send them to a gynecologist. For a gynecologist, they'd have to set up the surgery. But that was nothing. I mean, setting up surgery is You know, is how many people tough. would take that surgery gra- gladly to yes. it, solve that problem? Right. And we can do laparoscopic surgery. Generally, if you ca- catch this early before it's become... See, every time it, your uh, implants inside your belly bleed, they then they they scar. So your bowel gets stuck together, your bowel gets stuck to your ovaries and your uterus. So when it gets that bad, you have to actually go into the abdomen with an incision and and take apart the bowel and 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 take apart all this adhesion, all the scar tissue. I was going to say, is it like scar tissue? But early on, we can do scopes. Yeah. And endometriosis also causes infertility, so usually we catch these patients early on when they're infertile. Right. And then we can use a, a laparoscope and go in and, and buzz all the implants. So, as a younger woman, 18, 20, mm-hmm. uh, would you normally have those kinds of exams as a well-woman treatment type exam mm-hmm. that would catch that? Or do you wait until you're older, till you're married, or you're in a sexual relationship and you're starting to have pain? Me. Some some women are brought in by their mothers even, or some girls are brought in by their mothers long before 18 when they have such terrible periods that they can't go to school. They're bent over and so, and much, pain. so much pain in their abdomen, not just in their pelvis. So the up, up, or up here too, that they, they can't go to school. So when we evaluate those patients, there's no good way to see endometriosis in the abdomen. Right. But when we check them, we can either uh, do a bimanual exam, which is like feeling the uterus and the ovaries. You usually can feel everything matted, or you can feel a cyst that has endometriosis in it. So in those cases, we have to do a laparoscope to, to try to help them. Right. The, then the treatment is low-dose birth control pills and... Some mothers don't want us to do that, but that would that will save their fertility for later. Well, but the if low you want dose, grandchildren, you'll let me do it. The low dose <laughs> birth control pills are sometimes problematic too because there's not enough estrogen in them. Right. So then, even then, we can give some vaginal estrogen with the low dose birth control pills so that they don't get the sandpaper painful intercourse. But we want to stop this. And, and that's a lubrication issue. Yes. That's a direct corollary to the amount of estrogen. Right. Okay. Um, Testosterone helps as well. So we decided to have this conversation because we read an article on Huffington Post called Painful Intercourse. And the article contained a statistic which we found to be mm-hmm. astonishing. It said 43% of the American women, American women between the ages of 18 and 59 experience painful sexual intercourse. And they said that there are any number of causes. initially identified causes mm-hmm. Uh, that that could then you know set up a decision matrix that runs all over the place. But mm-hmm. doctors and patients have to go through this process to solve the problem. And they uh, initially it could be a lack of interest in sex. So if you're not open to the idea of sex and someone is is pushing you to have sex, your resistance to that could make that experience painful for you. But it may be that you're not open to the idea of having sex because you have no libido, which is a factor of having testosterone right and so they check testosterone levels and if they're mm-hmm. low they give you testosterone and suddenly you have a libido and you have orgasms oh, and Shocking. that's another yeah. and that's another women who don't have orgasms feel like they have 
been stimulated, but they don't go anywhere. Right. And you that's get, kind never of... never know when to stop. You just get tired, you quit. Yeah, right. And they that doesn't give them the, as we call it, the bang for their buck, basically. Well, no, it's no payoff. Yeah, so, so eventually, you're like, why do I want to bother with that? Because mm -hmm. there's nothing in it for me. Right. So the third type is, or the third cause right. is painful intercourse, which is what we're talking about. Right. The different types of painful intercourse. There's many types to that. So that would stop somebody from having sex, for sure, and cause pain. Absolutely. Lack of, lack of pleasure, I think, is either a psychological issue where you don't want to have pleasure because bad girls have I mean, it goes back to childhood. Well, and your religious messages mm -hmm. and cultural messages mm -hmm. about what can you do sexually, with whom, when, how often. You know, the, these things mm -hmm. are things that dirty girls do or bad girls do right. or bad guys do. Uh, and so you resist them. And so that is and not you've pleasurable. You've resisted them their, your whole life, and then you have to flip around when you're married or in a in a relationship, and then all of a sudden, or you, you can't cast flip blame it. in the relationship. You're you're not willing to do this. There's something wrong with you. You want to do this. There's something wrong with you because good people don't do this, and it leads to compound problems. But sometimes it's just they have spent so long. Yeah. Not having sex. I mean, I've had a couple in my history of being a gynecologist. I've had a couple um, young couples come to me because they never consummated their marriage, like years later. And that is huge. And, yeah. and it had to do with vaginismus, which is another painful intercourse problem. And basically, it's a physical response to... A, a, a anticipating pain so that your body and not your mind it's not conscious your body closes the vagina off basically just shuts it down yeah and so there's you can't nope your husband can't get in right basically and hits just it's just like hitting any kind of like your arm or it's not going to go anywhere so it hurts right. him right and it hurts her and they're frustrated and it's a really big problem they want to in, in the two cases that I had, they both wanted to have children. And so they were having trouble. They've never consummated the marriage. That's a problem. So you come back to the initial paradox. And the paradox is that that could be psychological. And if you have a sexual trauma history in early childhood that mm -hmm. causes you then to reflexively resist sexual encounters, that needs to be dealt with psychologically. Or if you have religiously been told that it is terrible. I mean, honestly... There is no reason that religion should say sex is bad because sex is, everyone should be having sex as an adult and in safe relationships. It's sad that they've made this a terrible thing and in the right circumstances, it's beautiful. But but when you, when you do this, say this on and on with your children or your children hear it from the pulpit, it's a, it is very um, they powerful. They internalize those messages. It's powerful and they, they can't get past it. Right. It's so. We so have to so it can be a psychological, cultural kind of issue that talk therapy could could be helpful mm -hmm. with, but it can also be, and you should always double check because it also be a physiological issue or a, a, an anatomical issue. So, which to me is the same thing. Right. To you is probably yeah, different. Yeah, physiologic but. means chemical. Anatomical means I did not know body. That. Okay. So, um, so what happens with one of the one of the I've had several patients with this sometimes. People have trouble um, consummating their marriage because they they have a like a wall or a septum down the middle of the vagina, and it's the divides it into two compartments into two sides. Okay, and usually it's a it's not down the middle. It's a, on one side it's small and one side it's large. So um, this isn't something you would find in pediatrics because it we don't do vaginal exams in pediatrics, and you might find it. In people, when you do a pelvic exam, like you if would, you do a manual pelvic, if you do, you have to do it. You should do a manual, where, that, a manual that's pelvic, the same term. Okay, I didn't which know. means you put two fingers or one in in a virginal um, vagina and feel the uterus, feel the ovaries through the abdominal wall. Okay, when you put your fingers in, there if there's a wall between. Dividing the vagina, you may not feel it because one finger goes on one side, one right, on the other, and right. you don't feel it. It's soft. Yeah. So that's something that would, during intercourse, maybe prevent a man from entering. Right. So when we 
The other thing is when you put a speculum in, it sometimes pushes this wall to the side. The speculum is a tool that gynecologists use right. to look inside. To look inside and see the cervix and look at the vaginal wall. Right. We do that with every well woman exam. Okay. So sometimes you just you put it in and this just it looks just like the vagina. It just goes over and and uh, pushes over to the side while you don't see it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've had several of these, but I've also had the most important one was one of my patients who had a baby and no one had ever diagnosed this. I'd done, I don't know how many pelvic exams on her. And when she had a baby, she has this septum and the baby's head can't come out. It's wow. a cra it was the craziest thing. So we had to, before the baby came out, we had to, we had to, um, clamp. She didn't and discover it until it. she was literally in the delivery right. process. Because it would, it would always go to the side when I put a speculum in. Wow. So it, it's, you have to literally, is Look there a name for that? For this. It's it's called a vaginal septum. Okay. And it can be fixed. In general, they're very they're very they don't go back very far. They're just like a um a linguini, basically, that kind of thickness. Mm -hmm. But they're they're vascular. So the way we do it so that people don't scar, you don't want them to get a scar from this because right. that could cause painful intercourse. So we take them to the operating room and they go to sleep for just like five minutes. And you have a laser. And you have a tongue blade, like the ah, uh, the thing that, you know, a yeah. wood tongue blade. You put it behind, like if this is the vagina and there's a wall, you put the tongue blade behind it. So the tongue blade's here, and it's like a backstop. Yeah. And you use you use the laser to go zit, zit, and take this little piece of tissue out, and it's over. Yeah. And they so heal no bleeding well. From that. No bleeding because no you scarring. use the laser, no yeah. scarring because you use the laser, right. and it's over. But it has to be done because it's very... You can't you can't have a baby through there. You can't have you can't even take tampons out. Wow. Sometimes they get stuck. You um, somebody doesn't know they have this. They're putting the tampons in and out, and then all of a sudden one day they put it in the larger side and they're trying to take it out the smaller side and it gets stuck. Right. It's so painful. Yeah. They have to. It's like an emergency. They've got to come in and and we've got to get the tampon out. Yeah. And they don't know what happened. Right. Sometimes that's how we diagnose. That's it. how you, and then. Then you say, well, we have to fix this. Right, right. We have to fix this so this doesn't happen again right. because that's that's something that would just kind of hang over their heads. They don't have a good idea of their own anatomy. <clears throat> so it's it's a scare it's a scary thing for them to get this stuck, put something sure. in that can't come out. But it's also painful with intercourse sometimes and sometimes not. The patient that they discussed in this article right. had it had prevented her from having intercourse. Yeah. So basically, that was causing pain every time he would so hit it, something. So it's not a standardized problem where it, it's always in the same place and the in the. <laughs> it's, it's it could a, happen anywhere in the vagina. Developmental meaning you don't have a genetic genetics for it. As you're developing, something happens and and you develop this oh, little this, this little piece of tissue. Yeah. So we can't even do genetics to figure out who's at risk. Yeah. It just is something we have to look for, especially on the first exam, right? To make sure that we don't miss it. So we can fix that. So if you are one of this 43% of women between 18 and 59 who regularly or occasionally has painful sexual intercourse, there are two directions and you need to go in both directions to find a solution. One is to look at the uh, uh, emotional talk therapy side of why is this a problem in my relationship and in my life and in my body? And the other is to go to the the physical side, the anatomical side with a physician to say, are there mechanical issues that need to be corrected? Whether it's a, a hormonal issue or a, a skin issue. A yeah. Uh, abnormal anatomy or endometriosis. Or, there An are, ovarian cyst can yeah. cause the same thing. So it could be something you need surgery for. So don't let it ruin your experience of sex don't let it ruin your relationship go get some help and don't get don't let it don't let their uh comments like go have a glass of wine before you have sex which relax. is ridiculous yeah. 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 because that's i mean you need a new doctor if they say that so basically you so they should be looking for a cyst endometriosis you know something else that's wrong and not just blow it off and say there's nothing you know it's all in your head Good rule of thumb. When you tell your doctor, I'm in pain, and they blow you off, go get another doc doctor. They need to look. They need to listen. They need to check. They need to run tests. If they're not willing to do that, go get another doctor. I agree. Thank you.
Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.